Hi guys, welcome to another dorm room review video. In this video I'm going to be reviewing Acme Hole by Lloyd Barnes. I've had this for a while now and I've been off at college and I didn't have all the supplies I needed at college, but now I'm actually back at my home for spring break and I had all the supplies I needed here, so I actually made up Acme Hole, finally got a chance to make it up after literally weeks of having it, and here's a performance of it. So now that you've seen the performance of Acme Hole, let's get into the review. So how hard is the construction? That's the thing that everybody wants to know when you have to make your own gimmicks. Honestly, it's not that difficult. If you can use a pair of scissors and an X-Acto knife and a needle, you can do this. And it's not complicated. Um, I don't want to give anything away method-wise, so I'm being careful with my words here. But basically, it's cutting some stuff out. Um, especially, the hardest part is getting the hole cut out of the card and the hole cut out of the black material that you use to put on the card. Um, if you have a hole punch, which is what Lloyd suggests, then this is very easy because you literally just take a, one of the big hole punchers and the card, punch a hole, and you, you're done. And that's the, the hard work done. And then the easy part comes where you just cut some stuff up. So I would highly suggest you actually get one of the big hole punches that will make your job a lot easier. I had to use a poker chip and trace around it with an X-Acto knife and my edges weren't too clean so I had to get a little bit of distance because you could kind of see some feathered edges and stuff. But that would have all been solved had I just got a hole punch and punched it. So that would be my first bit of advice to you. Now what all is required to build, I, I'm not going to say because um, for exposure reasons, but I will say it's something that most magicians have. It's something that a lot of gimmicks use. If you have gimmicks that change when you shake them and that sort of thing, then you may have this material at your house. If your parents are, um, or your grandmother or someone close to you is a seamstress, they may have the material that's needed. Maybe that's saying everything that needs to be said about that material, but it's very easy to come by. You can definitely order it on Amazon. Um, Lloyd uses one brand that I don't, I'm not really too fond of. I use another one that I learned from another project. Um, the one that he uses will absolutely work for this project. I just find that it loses its I almost said a very important word which would have given something away. It loses its main quality a little too fast, but it works for what this is. Now let's be honest, can you use this in the real world? Okay, well, method-wise, yes. Oh, by the way, there's no flaps in this, so there's not anything that's flapping over, just a little point. But method-wise, you could absolutely use this in the real world. The problem is the, the black hole, the actual spot. You would have to play around with that material to find the material that's right so that it doesn't reflect the light. Now, in my video that I just showed, I did have to do some editing, and I didn't really have to. It worked as it was, but however, the editing helped to make the illusion even more deceptive. And when I say editing, I just mean adding a filter onto the video. I just added the Western filter on iMovie, if you're just curious about that. And that was just to help with the depth perception that is created with that black hole. But if you can find the right material, then you can absolutely use this in the real world. The problem, another problem for me is the timing. So you, in theory, you can perform this very, very cleanly. You can show the king. You don't have to have the silk. You just flip it over and you pull the hole off. I was having some problem getting the timing right in the video, and it may be the way I made my gimmick. Um, it could be a lot of different factors. It could be the angle of my camera. So that's something that you'd have to play around with in the real world. However, if you do the presentation I just did with a silk, then you could absolutely do this in the real world with no problem whatsoever. Again, the only slight problem is the actual material the hole is made out of. So you'd have to play around with that and figure out something that works so that it doesn't reflect too much light. For this, I literally just used black electrical tape. So it was very reflective, very vinyl-y. But you know, maybe if you could use a felt or some other sort of cloth, that would probably help the illusion. Um, it may even work if you have a cloth shirt that matches the cloth you're using. Maybe that would help the illusion. I'm not really sure. I just know I played around with this using uh, some electrical tape and I easily was able to hide any kind of glimmers that may have happened prematurely just by going and adding the western filter. But also, let's also note that it doesn't matter if they see that it's a sticker because that's literally what's about to happen. So you show the hole is real, you turn it over, and let's say that they, first of all, if they're not 
paying attention to it and just kind of peripherally paying attention. So let's say you turn it over while you're talking to them. Now they see this with their peripheral and they'll absolutely believe it through a hole. And then the moment you look down, they notice there's some light glimmering off of it and you pull it off. So it doesn't really matter if they know it's a sticker because that's where this is headed in any way. Does that make sense? Um, people ask if this is black art. Well, obviously it is. I mean, obviously that I don't think that's any part of the method. That's the trick. The trick is, whoa, my brain was confused there for a second because of the black art. But you could also use a blue shirt or a red shirt or whatever color shirt you want that matches the whole gimmick. But black is the most common because the shadows and all that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much all I have to say about Acme Hole by Lloyd Barnes. Will I be using it in the real world? Honestly, no, I will not. Is it awesome for Facebook and Instagram? Heck yes it is. I have seen tons and tons of people doing this and posting it on Facebook. I, I Seriously, more, more than I've ever seen any other trick produced on a Facebook video, I've seen this come up over and over and over again. Random magicians who I'm friends with on Facebook. I'm, I'm like, oh, there's, oh, there it is again, there it is again. And it's actually perfect for that environment. It's perfect if you want a quick little YouTube shot for a promo reel. It's perfect if you want to add a really cool Instagram video or Facebook video. As for real world, I wouldn't do it in the real world. I don't think Lloyd would do it in the real world either, just honestly. I think he knows exactly what this is fit for, which is the camera. And I absolutely agree. So, in practical real world use, I give this a very low rating. I wouldn't really do it, although you could. I just don't think it's nearly as effective for use on camera. I say this is almost as good as it gets, like 99, 98% because it's so convincing and it looks great on camera, especially if you just take the extra effort to add a little bit of a filter just so that the black art effect is really prominent and works really well. So that's it. That's all I had to say about Acme Hole. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.